Are you just returning to Fortnite, trying to get back into it, but it's a bit overwhelming because there's so many good players? I get it, the game has come a long way and people have gotten cracked out of their minds. But my goal is to help you get on the right track today. The first thing you need to know is how to work the new layout in the hub. I know it sounds stupid, but a lot of people don't know how to search for creative maps. All you gotta do is hit this search bar in the hub and paste the code of the map you're looking for up here. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I built a map called How to Peace Control. There's other peace control maps out there, but this one actually teaches you from an absolute beginner level to a pro how to do different peace control techniques. This is a great place to start if you're just coming back to Fortnite because it'll teach you all those new techniques that have been developed over the days that maybe you missed out on. Let me give you a quick rundown on how this map works. All you do is shoot the cubes to get around the map. In the beginner tutorial section, you're gonna see these cubes on the wall. Those are the things you shoot and then voiceovers will play and teach you about the scenario that's right in front of you. You'll learn peak shots, how to do certain peace control techniques and more. And then all you gotta do is go over to the next section, beginner drills. And in this section, there's also voiceovers that you can shoot on the wall and you'll learn about the best way to handle every scenario you run into in the actual game. If you can memorize all of these different different drills and learn how to do them the absolute best, you should know what to do at every point in a fight. What I recommend is once you've learned all of these different drills, there's a cycle all option. Go into that so that you can practice, you know, adapting to the different situations. And that'll be the real test of whether or not you know how to do those drills, because you're going to be thrown in a different one left and right. <laughs> Lastly, there's an advanced section and there's no tutorials here. All you got to do is apply the techniques you learned in the beginner section, like peace controlling from behind right hand peaks, taking nice peak shots, all that jazz. Now, of course, it's one thing to be able to do this in creative against a bot. I understand. The way I was able to transfer this skill to an actual game was by practicing in 1v1s. And I know what you're thinking, oh, I want to go play the actual game. By all means, go play. You should only be spending a little bit of time in creative, otherwise you're gonna get bored. But let me give you this piece of advice. If you practice in actual 1v1s in creative, you're gonna be getting more fast paced fighting practice. That's why that's a really good place to learn how to transfer these peace control skills over to an actual game. I have a map down in the description called All in One 1v1s, and this is probably the best place to do that, and let me tell you why. This map cycles between box fights, build fights, zone wars, and realistics. So you're going to be getting an all around fighting practice. But you may be wondering why would you wanna practice box fights, zone wars, all these different ones? Why not just realistics? Well, each of them have their own benefits. So box fights are really good for improving your early game fights. Because you're fighting in a tight area, you don't have the most mats and you have to take really good peaks. Realistic fights are good for those realistic mid game fights. Zone wars are good for that final 1v1 if the zone is a little bit tight. And then build fights are good for just getting better mechanics because you have unlimited mats and you can practice all of those build moves that you've learned. So practicing all those modes in one map can give you a really well-rounded practice and skill level. The last map I'm gonna recommend and then we're gonna get into some in-game tips. The last map is called Solo Third Party Wars. If you're sick of getting third-partied in a game, this map will help you learn how to handle third parties. Basically, you start out in a normal 1v1 against someone in front of you, but there's a barrier that drops, and once it drops, you're able to third-party the other fights. This map forces you to block your angles at all point in time, not be standing in the open at any point in a fight. Like, if you're on high ground, you can't just sit up there. You have to build walls around yourself so that you don't get sprayed at by the other fight. The same thing applies in an actual game. If you're worried that you might get third-partied, don't be standing in the open on height. Build off your angles or initiate a box fight. This map seems like it would just be annoying because you're getting third party all the time, but it's actually really fun to play with friends, so go give it a try. We talked about how to get better peace control in that map earlier, but what about actual building? If you haven't played the game in a while, building can be a really overwhelming thing because people have gotten so fast with it. If you've been feeling that way, I made probably the best video on YouTube for how to improve your building. It starts from the absolute basics and gets up to some pro level moves. So if you want to improve your building just a little bit at a time, pick one move from that video, learn it at the start of the day. I attached the link to it down in the description. It's just simply called how to build in Fortnite. Oh, and to practice it, you could just load privately into either a 1v1 map or I have a map down below called Jiven's Practice Map. There's a free build section in there you can use. It even has speed options so you can slow down the game while you're learning these build moves and that might help you out. So yeah, now guys, if you're struggling to win your first game, whether it's ranked or pubs, follow these next tips. I'm gonna break down a game that I just played and I promise you these rotational tricks 
fighting tips, all this stuff is gonna help you out. I've been getting asked a lot, how do I survive off spawn? Where should I land? But really it doesn't matter where you land. All that matters is you understand the spot you're going to. The more you land at one spot, the more you're gonna survive there. I've been going paradise a lot, so that's where I'm gonna go this game. There's always an alpha spot at different locations. This one is the top of hotel, because you can land there before any of those far buildings, and if you get an AR on top, then boom, you can get a few free kills out of the sky. Okay, just a forewarning, there are going to be some boring parts of this video where I'm just talking about strategy, but I promise you, if you really listen to the stuff I say throughout this game, I promise it'll help you out. The biggest keys to winning off spawn are trying to get a pump and trying to get some shields before fighting. If you can pull that off, you should be able to win it fairly free. Also, bushes are the most broken thing because it protects you from first shot damage. I was playing really slow off spawn because there were a lot of people here, but eventually I just got fed a free kill and then went up to high ground to scout around a bit. Sure enough, when I got up to high ground, I just managed to get a free kill, but while I was going for the loot, somebody else third partied. This fight right here was so good. Let me break it down for you. Initially, I just went for any shot to get this bush off the guy. And after hitting the shot, I got the double edit from above. Notice how when I do this double edit, I back up behind my ramp so he can't have an angle on me. After I got that first shot, I saw him going out the right, so I just got the double edit over top of him and I finished the fight. A perfect fight. Now, what I'm gonna say next is so important, so listen up. I wasn't sure if there were other players here, but I assumed there were. Most people would just run through this town trying to find them, but I circle around the outer edge. The reason I do this is if there is somebody else, this makes it so they can't sneak up on me. If I ran down the center, I would have danger on all sides, but because I go around the outside, I only have to look in one direction. Staying out of the center is a really important concept, and we're gonna talk about it more later in this video, but eventually I find the guy. Right off the bat, when I was dropping to pressure his wall, I shoot it with my pump before pickaxing it. That's how I was able to break the wall super quickly with just one pickaxe. He ends up just building the height and I'm just slowly working my way up towards him while blocking my angles. I'm really just trying to keep my eye on the enemy, block the angles that he has on me, and wait for him to give me free shots. I do a fake chop out here, not breaking him out entirely, but hoping that he drops when he hears me chopping. Sure enough, he did, but this guy was all over the place. After he went down, he just went straight back up and I got a free shot. And then I just had to chase him down. Rather than pressuring his metal wall here, I went to the side where I knew a wood wall was, that way I could break it quicker. And I got the kill. After finishing that fight, I just got some shields and then got ready for the mid game. What I'm about to say next is so important, so listen up. Now the next thing to note is the next zone pulls kind of towards the top left of the map. So that means we can predict that the next zones will probably pull in that direction again, at least a little bit. Instead of going straight down the center of the zone, we want to kind of wrap around the edge. It's a little risky to go down the center because then you're going to have a lot more players around you. Just like off spawn, if you go to the center, there's danger on all sides. There might be other players around this edge though, so we got to be really careful right now. Because, you know, players like from Lucky Landing and stuff have to rotate up this way too and Fatal and Flush Factory. So as you can see, like I said, it pulled to the top left once again. Now you don't have to fully focus on rotating. Like there's a fight going on in front of me. I could third party this. You just have to beware because when there's noise, it usually attracts other players. So if this team is fighting, there might be someone sneaking up on this fight from the opposite side as well. Nonetheless, I wanna make this game interesting. So let's go ahead and take this fight. We're gonna sneak up and try to get a little sneak attack. This guy's one HP and now he's dead. So many shield pots on this guy. On this guy. And that guy was really weak. I don't know why he was fighting like that. See what I mean? There's already another player. Holy crap! We have to dive down and get behind this mountain right here so that we don't get shot. That player's probably looting all that stuff, so we got lucky that there's a lot of loot there. But see what I mean with the third parties? If there's noise, people are gonna come. That's just how it works. So now we wanna wrap all the way around this side, because think about it, greasy? Probably already rotated. Shifty, probably already rotated. Snobby, probably already rotated. Everyone's right around here right now, around that drop. See, Greasy is very quiet right now. It looks like everyone's gone. That's when I see this guy in the car and we're on the far left side of the zone. There's nobody around, I already checked. So this is a perfect fight to take because there's most likely not gonna be any third parties. I started the fight a bit rough. I was missing all my shots, but right here, I lock in. I go for a peak shot over this floor and as soon as I take the shot, I build a wall. That's what makes that a good peak. He wasn't able to shoot me because the wall immediately blocks his shot. 
When I mantle up here, I block all of the angles that the enemy could have dropped on and shot me from. And I notice him drop in front of my wall. That was a perfect opportunity to peace control from behind a window peek. And then I just set up perfect peaks and finish the fight. Those are the type of peace control moves that you're gonna learn in my how to peace control map if you practice in it. Just a reminder, code to that map is down below. After finishing up that fight, I could just stick on this left side of the map here, moving up towards Haunted Hills. That's where the least amount of players are gonna be, but there's only like six other players left. So I kind of move towards the center and I start to find a couple AIs. I got two free kills because these were not real players. And at this point, I decide to push up to the guy on high ground. I use the tree as a line of sight break as I push towards him. Once I get past that tree, I just grapple up and start the fight. Notice how I'm positioned to the left, so if he makes an edit, I'll have a good peek here. You see that? He couldn't even take a peek shot on me. One thing to be really careful about in situations like this is there's still third parties. Even though there's not that many people alive, if you're on high ground having a build fight, you could get sniped, sprayed in your side, or chopped at any point in time. That's why I wasn't build fighting here. I was more so trying to initiate a box fight. But I was low-key getting cooked here. Like, he was setting up some perfect peaks, and I was not seeing it coming. So I just chilled, got some heals off, and eventually a third party did come, and they chopped us out. And guess what? The guy on high ground got shot from the side because he wasn't blocking his angles. I heard him get cracked, and that's when I go up to finish the fight. After getting that kill, I rotated to the edge of zone, and sure enough, the next zone pulled straight to me. This was a blessing. The other two players were on the opposite side, so I just held an angle here and played kind of cringe. I just griefed them as they rotated from the backside of zone. I picked up one free kill from doing this, and then it was a 1v1 for the win. It's situations just like these where playing that all-in-one 1v1 map could come in clutch, because this is basically just a Zone Wars 1v1. The zones move so fast this season, so staying ahead is honestly super important. I kind of learned my lesson this game because it was hard to stay ahead. I should have been just way ahead of the zone. Nevertheless, we still managed to pull off the win. I hope this video helps you guys out. I got tons of other helpful tutorials on my channel and more on the way, so stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.